information. Let me say this. Even though we're in the information age, over the last few years, we've been in the misinformation age. Can I get an amen? And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And it's funny how those that they are saying are carrying misinformation are those that are more informed than the ones who are saying they're carrying misinformation. Amen. People aren't just saying things to be saying things. They're looking for answers. They're looking for truth. They're looking for something that's going to help them press from point A to point B. We're not a bunch of idiots. We've been here a long time. Amen. Some of us, as long as Ken Rich, we've been here a long time. Amen. So we're, we're trying to figure out things. So it's not about misinformation. Amen. We've heard stuff over and over again that has um, told us that maybe we're in the right. So we stand with that. Matter of fact, you've got to start seeing life through biblical lenses. When you do that, it shifts everything in your life. It, it just changes. So experts tell us that we're in this, also not only the information age, we're entering into what is known as an isolation age. And I've been noticing that over the last 10, 15 years, pastoring. There was a time in the early 2000s to, to let me say this, in 1993 to about 2000, there was an influx of tremendous people coming into the house of God. And then we had a place where people started cocooning. They started, you know, we built subdivisions and people would stay in them. They'd go to work. They'd come back. They would isolate. So whenever we hit this pandemic, it just magnified the isolation. People started isolating, staying in their basements. Uh, they started staying away from folk, and, and it just, it start, it, 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 what it did, it perpetuated a fear in our lives that we've had to overcome, we've had to work through it, and that's not throwing stones at anyone, it's just what it did, amen, and from work to home, from working back to their home again, and then we started working from home. I've talked with people who now will never go back into an office building. All their work will be from home through the Internet. They're never going to go back again. They've already said that. My brother-in-law's one of them. He works for Liberty Mutual. Amen. And so he'll never go back. He'll stay with Liberty Mutual. Amen. And I just when I'm there, I get to hear him say Liberty Mutual. And uh, so I know he's dealing with that. And he told me, he said, I'll never go back in an office building again. As long as there's internet here, I'll be able to do what I do. So the isolation has become more increased. And, and because of that, our internet reactions and relations are important how we connect with people through the internet and social media through facebook and instagram and other venues and live streaming news it's become important because a lot of people hey are not coming back they're not coming back to the house they're not going back to walmart they're not going back to kroger's they're going to order their food they're going to drive by they're going to pick it up right sister tony hey, amen they're going to they're going to do all of that they, they're never going to have to it's just where we're at today uh, amazon visits us so much that we know who they are hey, amen i had a young man who needed a little uh, uh community service found out his dad was our um uh brown driver what do they call those guys UPS guys, yeah, the UP, he's a UPS guy, so his son's been working with us for the last couple of days, getting in a little extra time, hallelujah, to get over his time, and uh, so all that's connected, and we're connecting that way, and it's not going away, but I still believe in the house of God, I believe in coming here, I believe in hearing the mail, then I believe you leaving here and carrying the mail. Amen. So I think it's important we fellowship, we stay connected. Just because some are shifting away doesn't mean we have to. But it's important we're able to still connect with those who aren't here in this building. Some are local, but some are global. Some are around the, the other places, and they have found out about us. Amen. As a matter of fact, let me just tell you, I was talking in the back, and Holly said, Pastor, this week I've already met two people that know you, and they're not in this church. And it's kind of, you know, and it's cool for a new believer in this house to find out that we are people of influence. There were people that have connected with others. So with the information society, we have the mode of transporting information, transmitting messages. The delivery of mail has evolved in one of the most incredible advances known to man. From the Pony Express, when somebody ran it in a, in a pouch on a horse, amen, all the way now to the postal service our desire has, it will always be to get the message there as quickly as possible. When I was a young man, you only got the news at night, WHNT with Walter Cronkite, amen, and after Walter Cronkite went off, that was the only news we got for the whole day, amen, that 30 minutes, and then after him would come on the local news, and it would end with H.D. Bagley, you never heard of him, but he was our meteorologist, you remember H.D. Bagley, H. amen, and when he, when he closed off, he'd say, whatever you do this weekend, go to church Sunday, when's the last time you heard anybody say that on TV, amen, that was H.D. Bagley, and I was a young man, I remember hearing him sign off that way, but now you get news 24 hours a day, did you know I don't even have to watch the Super Bowl today to see the commercials, 
I've already seen them, watched them. Amen. As soon as I land, I watched the commercials. I can tell you now the Dorito commercial is the best one of the whole bunch. If you watch the Super Bowl for the commercials, the Dorito one with the sloth is the best one. There you go. Just letting you know in case you don't want to watch. News has gone out that fast. Information has taken off. You can't even wait till we know. We already found out Russia's invading next week. We know it already. Amen. I already heard China was cheating before they ever got to play it. I mean, it's already going on. Amen. Information is flying out there everywhere. And then the same day service. Amen. You can order furniture from a local guy that loves mattresses around here, and he'll get it to you today. I mean, it's now. We want it now. We put it in the microwave. We want it now. We got to have it now. It's overnight delivery. Amen. That's the way things work. Fax machines, then emails, then smartphones. Smartphones. I get into Utah. I start getting messages on Facebook about Utah. How they know I'm in Utah? You got to take your locator off your phone or they're going to find you. Amen. It's crazy. We, we live in a tremendous day uh, of information. We got tablets. I got a tablet right here. I do my sermon on another tablet, send it to this tablet and download it. And there I got my, it's right here. And it used to scare me. Joseph, I'd come to the pulpit with my written notes and this tablet. And all the other preachers said, no, we just use our tablet. I go, not me. I'm scared this thing going to shut down. Amen. Shut down. I'm in trouble. No, you're not. You got it on your phone. Oh, that's right. I've, I've even preached off my phone before. Information. We're in that day. We're in that age. And last time's funny. I had a dream. I was preaching off my old notes again. That's scary when you have that dream and you stand here looking at this tablet and think, was, was God telling me something last night? Amen. We push a button on the keyboard, and all of a sudden it says, you got mail. You got it. And we can't wait for that. And our, our text, the recipients of, the, uh, of this letter were, were there in Rome, mostly Gentile. The theme of the book uh, of Romans is one of the gospel or the good news. Amen. St. Augustine was so moved by the letter of the book of Romans that as he read the book, he gave his life to Christ. Just reading the book of Romans, it said he was justified by faith. So mail is so important. When you get to mail, when you get this book right here, it's to inform you. Mail is to invite you. I, I've got invitations to weddings this week. Amen. You, you get that. It's to entice or intrigue you. I hate, I hate, I honestly do, because I bite. I bite. It'll say something about a, a football player that I like, and I'll click on it, and i got to go through all this mail to get down to the football player that they just told me about. Amen. It, it's, it's enticing. Amen. It's, it's, it's almost seducing. It's pulling you in. It's intriguing. It's to remind you. Mail is to remind you. On my phone, I have calendars, and, and those calendars will beep and say, you got church tomorrow. You got swap tomorrow. You got this going on tomorrow. My phone reminds me. All the time, I'm getting mail. Your, your mail, your email, your text mail, your social connections, they often reveal your involvement. All you got to do is look at somebody's mail. That you know, if you're a criminal, be careful. Don't throw your mail away. Because the police are waiting on you to do it so they can go through your mail. When they do it, they'll find out who you really are and what kind of criminal you are. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm talking to you all. They'll find out what kind of criminal you are. Amen. Beware of your mail. Your mail tells so much about you. There's power in the mail. It affects us. You know, it can make your day or it can break your day. Mail. Some folk cannot wait to get to their mailbox. They can't wait to answer a text. They can't wait to check their mail. Amen. While others approach it in fear. Of what's in there? Another bill? A notice? What could be in If I could yes on that text, amen, to text or not to text, that is the text. Amen, what, what, did, what did I do here? All of us have known junk mail, spam, amen, an opportunity to buy something that you are not totally interested in. I started looking at motorcycles again, and boom, my phone blows up with motorcycles. Amen, it's all on there. New motorcycles popping up all the time, daily, still on there now. It keeps coming up. Then you get credit card opportunities. You ain't got the money, but you got the card. Amen. And then you bite, and the next thing you know, you're in trouble. These, these are what ma mail can do to you. Amen. Some folk, I've traveled. I've traveled quite a bit. I see giant mailboxes. You should go out to the ranch. We got a big mailbox. Why is that? Because we got lots of people that live there. And we get lots of mail. We send out lots of mail. But most of it comes in through them blue and brown trucks. Amen. So the, the problem with most is they don't know how to handle junk mail. See, I find the mail that is sent is like the people that you know. They like the people that sent it. Amen. Three types that I've found out in my life, and some of you have heard this before. You need to hear it again. There are acquaintances in life. 
This lady I met on the plane, her name's Sandy. She became an acquaintance. There's a good chance she's going to be at church next week. Amen. I meet acquaintances all the time. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be a connection or if they're going to be an attachment. You don't know yet. So when I meet them, at first they're just an acquaintance. You say hi, you shake hands, you connect with them. Then connections, we call them friends. They reciprocate. A friend will always reciprocate to you. That means it's a circle. It's going to come back to you. Amen. You pour into their life, they come back to you. You're blessed with those kind of people. These are those we sow and we reap with. Amen. They're going to be here tomorrow. There's a loyalty connected to them. They, you know, you can go months and years without talking to them. I just, by the way, guys, thank you so much for my birthday gifts and, and blessings and, and kindness you showed toward me. That, that showed connection in your life and my life. Amen. It reciprocates back and forth. And there are people that I haven't heard from in one year. Amen. But on my birthday, they're going to connect again. Amen. And it's so, and I get phone calls from folks. It's just a blessing. Amen. And I understand well, these, these are my connections. Relationship is the most important thing you've got in this life. Amen. Relationship is the currency of the kingdom. As long as you've got relationship, you've got connections. Amen. You've got a place to stay. You've got food. You've got gas. Amen. Maybe for three days, but that's, but that's enough. Can I get an amen? Amen. I, I love connections, whether it's scooters or car shows or mudding or concerts or the ladies' gatherings, the fellowships. Those connections are important. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times. A brother is born in adversity. Amen. The, the Living Bible says a true friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of need. Uh, it's important you find out who your brothers and your sisters are when you're in need. They're going to come to your rescue. They're going to pray for you. They're going to be with you. There's those wonderful connections. I want to be a friend. But listen to me. I don't have, you don't have to be my friend for me to be your friend. I learned this a long time ago. Amen. I am friends with people that are not my friends yet. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But we connect with each other. Friend loves with affection. A brother is forged from rejection. I'll say it again. A friend loves with affection. A brother is, fo is forged from rejection. Amen. David found out who his brothers were when he went to the cave. Joseph found out who his brothers were as he moved through life. Amen. Often you don't know who your brothers and sisters are until you've gone through something that's forged you and beat you out in life. Amen. And, and life can be like the anvil. I'll never forget a, a pastor friend of mine, matter of fact, a relative, that said to me when I graduated from Bible college, I got all these wonderful accolades. You're going to be a great preacher. You're going to travel. You're going to do this, that, and the other. This guy sent me a, a, a message. I'll never forget it. It's the only message I remember. He said, Jerry, may God give you messages beaten out of the anvil of experience. I'll say it again. May God give you messages beaten out of the anvil of experience. And I found out through life it was my experiences that gave me my sermons. Amen. My messages came through the experience of life and near death and things of that nature and how to deal with people. I don't counsel people. I give people advice. Counsel costs you money. Advice is free. Amen. Folk want me to counsel, I'm going to charge you. Amen. Why? Because if I don't charge you, you won't do it. Right? Amen. If I charge you enough, I told one guy, he said, will you marry me and so-and-so? Sure. He said, how much? I said, $1,000. He said, $1,000? He said, why are you charge $1,000? I'm going to say, I'm $1,000. And you stay with her for five years, I'll send you $100 back. You stay with her another five years, I'll give you another 100 You get 20 years in, you get 400 bucks back. Amen. If you can stay with her till I'm dead, well, that's between you and Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So there, there, are, uh, there are connections in life. And then there are attachments. Now, you know, and you're going to have to decide what's an attachment or not. Telemarketers are attachments. When my phone goes off, it tells me, now, thank you, Jesus, don't answer that phone. Spam. He said, something posing as media is getting hold of you. Amen. Don't answer that phone. Amen. Insurance solicitors. How many times do they want me to solicit to, to insure a car I owned in the 80s? And somebody told them, I don't have that car no more. Amen. And they solicit and solicit. You know, the problem with attachments, and it can be even people that you've known in your life, they will suck the life out of you. That's why we delete certain emails. I don't even go to I don't even click on to it. I, I say, you will send me messages saying, that ain't me. Don't open that. Amen. you got to know about the mail that's coming your way. If you're in public school, college, anywhere else, you got to filter all that liberal stuff that comes your way through the knowledge of the Word of God. 
Amen. If not, it's going to mess you up when they start pumping philosophy at you and evolution at you and all the other things. You've got to make sure you stand for the Word of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? Watch out for attachments. Amen. They come at you. We got caller ID. Thank God. When we were young, we didn't have caller ID. We didn't know who we were going to pick up and get. And, and we were on a party line. So we'd pick up, my granny would pick up, and another neighbor would pick up, then you got to tell them to hang up while you talk to them. Amen. You talk to them a little while, then you hang up and tell granny to finish talking to them. You don't know who you're talking to. But now when my phone goes off, I know. Oh, my, I know. Some of you know that I do this. I've got A's and C's by a lot of people's names. Amen. Certain folk call me, it says attachment. Do not answer that phone. Amen. They are not going to pour back into your life. All they want to do is take, 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 and take your time, take your energy, take your finances. Even pastor, that's just terrible. Amen. I know it is. But you live in the way you can get peace, and I will leave the way I can get peace. Amen. And I don't get peace when I answer certain phone calls because that's attachments. Amen. That's just people. That, and how do you know? Because you poured in their life and they poured back. Amen. They were faithful. They loved. They loved the Word of God. They connected back with you. Amen. You never have to do anything for me. Just showing up means you love this house. Amen. It means you love Jesus. It means you might like me or one of us. Amen. So you're not always responsible for what comes to you. You're not. But you are always responsible for how you respond to what comes to you, how you responded with what came to you. Oftentimes, amen, I'll I just tell you, I'm not concerned that someone gossiped to you about me. I'm not concerned about that at all. I'm concerned you listened and allowed it. That's what bothers me. Amen. You, you, can, you can shut the garbage down. You don't have to listen to it. Can I get an amen? Hey, well, that's good preaching, Pastor. Thank you so much. Amen. So something else comes with a virus. You've got to be aware of it. Amen. So, some, you don't, don't be so anxious to share it with others. The virus is like gossip. It destroys and never builds up. Let me tell you how do you handle gossip. Quit putting wood on the fire. Amen. One of the things you're not going to hear me ever talk about on social media is the gossip that I might hear. Amen. I'm not going to put wood on the fire. I keep the wood off, the fire goes out. I drove by the back of the property today, and we, we cut about 15 trees down, stacked all the branches and everything out there. Now it's just a pile of ashes. It ain't even smoking. Amen. Which was once big, is now small again. Amen. Just learn to take. Some of you, you get involved in family squabbles and gossip and all that. Quit talking about it. Amen. The worst thing that ever happened to us when we were kids is they put a long extension cord on our phone. My mama could walk all the way into the living room, back over into the kitchen, a door shut on that thing, have a crinkle in it, but she could go out. There's something about that short leash keeps you from talking too long. Amen. Now we're cordless. We're in trouble. Amen. Stop putting. So the sender, when you look at mail, Look at the sender. A mail often reveals the motive of the sender. When I think of the Word of God, it was sent to me. It's a love story to me. Amen. When I'm reading the Bible, I know that God sent this to me. Everybody say, to me. He sent it to you, man. Amen. This is your book. Amen. This is the love story to you. So 2 Corinthians, when I'm reading 2 Corinthians eleven twenty four, 24, amen, I read about the courier. His name was Paul. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, there's danger in carrying the mail. Woo, that's danger in carrying the mail. You know, there's money that's transferred through the mail. There's information that transfers through the mail. That there are things that come through the mail that if you knew about it, you would understand it's dangerous to carry it. And Paul understood that. And the Bible says that Paul made the statement. He said, I've been flogged five times with the Jews, 39 lashes, beaten by Roman rods three times. I mentioned this during the midweek. Amen. The beating with rods on Paul's life was on his feet. They hung him upside down. They took his bare feet and they beat the bottom of his feet with rods. They meant to maim him, to bloody him, to cripple him. Why is that? Because he said that it's good news that the feet of those who carry the gospel, amen, are beautiful. He mentions this. They tried to stop him. I thought to myself, if he was not carrying the mail, would he have got beaten? No. Would he have got his feet lashed? No. Would he have been shipwrecked three times? No. Would he have gone through a night and a day in the deep? No. Amen. It's amazing the things we have gone through in life because of this book. Carry the mail. Come on. Be the mail. Amen. If you get persecuted for doing it, keep on doing it. Amen. Keep on sharing this gospel. You might meet somebody on the plane that needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he goes on to say that. Romans 10, 15, he says it again. How And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. When somebody shows up at our church who wants to be a missionary to a foreign field, we bless them. Amen. I remind them, I can't go to Japan. I can't go to China. I can't go to North Korea or South Korea. I can't go to, to Mexico, but I can send somebody. 
The army of God is a praying army, a sending army, a bending army. Sometimes we send people, we finance them, we help them, we pray for them, we bend our knees and pray for them. Sometimes God calls us to go. I've been involved in church long enough that we've sent people out of this church to other places. Last week we prayed over a man by the name of Dave. Long beard down here. Where did we send him? To the foreign land of Ohio. Prayed over him and sent him away. Amen. We're sending church. We like sending folk away. I've had folk leave this church, go to other churches, told me they were going. I prayed over and sent them away. Then I called their pastor, the, the new pastor, and said they're coming. <laughs> quit, quit. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So there are two agents that send the mail every day. There's one sending encouragement, and there's one sending discouragement. How do you handle discouraging news? First, tell God about it. You get discouraged in news, don't tell others, tell God. Amen. Have we forgotten the power of prayer? To pray, to talk to God, the ability to enter our closet and find the hem of his garment and make our requests known? Amen. If I could talk to him, when I get discouraged in news, when I hear the doctor tell me something about my body that I don't like, amen, or somebody I love, when I hear discouraging news, talk to him. Matthew 6, 6 says, but when you pray, go into your closet. Into your, that's what it said, your room. Get private. Have an opportunity to be away from others. Close the door. No distractions. And pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. If I get discouraged in news, i got to talk to him. you got to remind yourself of his goodness, his love, and care for you and your loved ones. Amen. So you got to talk to him. Everybody say, talk to him. Talk to got to talk to him. Second thing when you get discouraged in news, oh, this is going to be hard, ignore it. Ignore it. Nehemiah was a cupbearer. Now, you heard us talk about cupbearers. Amen. They're the ones who drank the drink before the king. The king's name was Artaxerxes. Nehemiah had been kidnapped, brought into this foreign land, and there became a cupbearer. He loved Jerusalem. It was his hometown. Some of you, this is not your hometown. You weren't born and raised in Cross, but you love this place. But I ask you about your hometown. I always ask people, I, I got time to be at the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Man, that's the best man can offer right there. Big old golden pipe organ. You're talking about somebody. There was no light show. <laughs> there were no fog machines. There was a big golden organ up there, and somebody was playing it. I did a little video while I was in there. I thought, let me see if I can get away with this. And real quick, my, my brother-in-law and Jay was looking at me like, there he goes. You know, I'm looking at the stage, and this, you know, it's real, it's quite popular, that place is. And, and uh, uh, so I, I, I shared about I don't know why I got off on the Mormons right there. Anyway, it's, you ever know that, Joseph? No, neither, neither you or David, neither one have done it, but I've done it. You live long enough, preach long enough, you'll forget what you wanted to preach. Nehemiah, cupbearer, says to Artaxerxes, hometown, talking about hometowns. And uh, I talk, everybody, every one of them little missionaries I met, I asked them the question, where are you from? But none of them were from Salt Lake City, Florida, Arizona. Togo, amen, all over the place. But I had to ask them. I, I start conversations with everyone I meet. Uh, Brenda went to the restroom, and then the girls' restroom was right next to the men's restroom in this restaurant we were at. That's normally how they do it, amen. And, and, and she said, Pastor, was you talking to the next guy in the stall in there? I said, yeah, I was just carrying conversation. I, I mean, we were standing there. I mean, it was, wasn't awkward to me. So I said, hey, bud, where are you from? He said, Kentucky. I'm, I said, I'm from Alabama. He said, how about that? Roll Tide. Yeah, huh. Hey, Amen. We got conversation going. You girls not even talk to each other in the bathroom? You don't? Why do y'all go two by two? I don't know why you go two by two. I'm going to talk to somebody. I got a minute. Hey, Amen. I know y'all just ignore it. I, I don't know what you do. I don't know. I've never been in there. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. So you, then you got, you got Nehemiah, and he says, Artaxerxes, my hometown, Jer Jerusalem's falling apart. The walls are down. Please let me go. Long story short, he gives him a credit card. He goes there. He buys stuff from Home Depot. He starts repairing the place. But there were enemies who went in and out of the city and was taking advantage of the city. There was Tobiah and Sanballat. Amen. And when they heard this cupbearer, amen, this simple guy from, from the land where Artaxerxes was king, they said this, when Sanballat and Tobiah, uh, uh, the Arab, <laughs> and, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks in it, even though I hadn't yet installed the gate. Sanballat 
sent hit this message, come and meet with us, amen, at the Valley of Oh No. If the valley's called Oh No, don't go. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. If it's Oh No, you don't go. So he said, come on down here and meet us at Oh No. Amen. He said, I knew they were scheming to hurt me. I knew it was bad news. So I sent messengers back with this. I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. Why should the work come to a standstill just so I can come down to see you at Oh No? Four times they sent this message. Four times they text me. Four times they emailed me. Four times, amen. I gave them the same answer. The fifth time the messenger came, Sanballat sent an unsealed letter with this message. The word is out among the nations, and it says it's true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. That's why you. You are rebuilding the wall. The word is that you want to be king. How many know that is false? Amen. That was negative. That was discouraging. It was a flat-out lie. It was enticing. It was, it was, they were trying to get him. They were provoking him. Have you ever been provoked? Does people know what your button is? Some of you, your button is so... What's the word? Say it again. Obvious. Good word. Your buttons are so obvious. You know, you, you, whether you're pouting or, or doubting or, 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 or down, or, 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 or it's like you just want somebody to ask you. There are people, I will not ask them how their day is. By looking at them, I can tell I don't want to know. Amen. And I don't want to be insincere. So I'm not even going to ask you, no matter how much you look like you want me to. Mm-hmm. Your button. You know the people know your button the best? Folk that live with you. They know your button. Boy, they will touch you. Quit. Hide your button. Amen. Ignore it. You don't have to say, I have found the secret of solitude. That if there are times I will hear stuff, I ain't saying nothing. And it will drive the sender of the bad information, the lies, the discouragement crazy and you know what they'll quit doing they'll quit saying stuff to me because they know i ain't responding i won't respond on facebook instagram that other thing i ain't responding amen and when you don't respond they'll quit messing with you and they'll go to somebody else hallelujah with this message, the word is out. Verse 7, and, and that you have appointed prophets to announce in Jerusalem. There's a king in Judah. The king is going to be told all this. Don't you think we should sit down and have a talk? Amen. I sent him back this. There's nothing to what you're saying. You made it all up. You lying scumbag. They were trying to intimidate us into quitting. They thought they'll give up. They'll never finish it. I prayed, God, give me strength. Is it really necessary for you to always answer discouraging news? Is it always necessary for you to answer that phone? Is it always necessary for you to reply? Amen. Sometimes the best reply is, why, thank you. Somebody told me a while back, I can't stand your preaching. Why, thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm not preaching to you because you never listen. Third thing. Remind the devil. Remind the devil of your purpose. Amen. That you've got a purpose here on this earth. God put you here to carry the mail. Amen. You are the mail. Hallelujah. That's why God put you. At the time when the Pharisees came to Jesus, said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. Jesus replied, go tell that fox. <laughs> I'll drive out demons. I'll heal people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. I was in that giant tabernacle there in Salt Lake, and I, I'm not poking fun, pushing, or being mean, but I'm telling you, giant pretty pipe organs don't heal people. Pretty pews don't heal people. Amen. People of faith heal people. Hallelujah. That, that's what Jesus, that, that saves people. Remind the devil that you live by the good news, amen, of your prophetic future, that you in the provident hand of God. Hallelujah. That God's hand is upon you, and every now and then he will show his hand. Let me start closing here. We all need some good news. Woo, we need good news. Amen. You know, the, the news of this house is W-I-N. When the lost integrate the body, nurture people. When the lost integrate nurture that's what we do we, that, it's never changed in 19 years of the little country church win winning the lost integrating amen and winning w-i-n we win the lost 
Amen. We integrate the body. Amen. We bring people together. It simply means to make whole, to give integrity, completeness, to make right. Hallelujah. Amen. And to win the loss. Acts chapter 1. It's going to be a long closing. Acts chapter 1. Let me give you this in verse 1. Somebody said, this is so important. This is so important for you, for all you preachers, for all you that carry the mail in this house. Jesus' ministry was wrapped up in two words, touching and telling. That's all he did. That's all he did. He said, I came to save sinners, and I came to uh, defeat the devil. And he's not complicated. And when I started pastoring the little country church, there were several things I decided I was going to do. One of them was I was going to quit being busy. I was going to start being effective. Amen. They want to be busy no more. Amen. Uh, several things. I changed my vocabulary. Amen. I quit using the word safe so much. I'm only safe in God. Amen. But in this world, I'm secure because of him. I started changing the way I lived. I started taking more risk because I believe faith was spelled R-I-S-K. These are things that I've held on to. I've not let go of this kind of thinking. Amen. It's still, uh, I'm on the airplane. People saying, you know what? Uh, what? What about be safe? It ain't up to me on the airplane. It's up to the pilot. Don't pray for me. Pray for the pilot. Amen. I'm just a passenger. Hallelujah. And I've been on planes that started bucking and, 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 and having trouble and, and the things were popping off. And I was screaming, come on, Jesus. I'm smiling on the plane. I get excited when stuff like that happens. Okay. In my former book, this is Luke writing. He said, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach. That's it. That's what he did. So as a 12-year-old, what would a 12-year-old teach us? Amen. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus at 12 years of age said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's quoting out of the book of Isaiah because he's anointed me, which means he's empowered me. He's given me power. Amen. To preach the gospel to the poor. How many know we got poor folk? How many of you were poor folk? I'm poor. Amen. The only difference in my poor was that my dad never told us we were poor. But by the time I recognized that what other people had versus what we had, amen, I began to compare. Isn't that what we do? We compare. I realized I was poor. Amen. I had an outhouse, had a two-holer, picked cotton as a little boy. Amen. Had one, one heater in the house, electric heater in the kitchen. You got up. You ran across the linoleum. You gathered around the heater. You were like a rotisserie granny. You just rotated around that thing till you stayed warm. If you straddled it, you better be careful. Amen. I come up that way. We ate beans our whole life. I mean, every bean you can imagine, we ate. Every now and then it had ham bone in it. Amen. And I'm not ashamed of that. I learned how to embrace that. Amen. It's, but here's the thing. Jesus said to the poor, preach, tell, talk to them. Now, we can give them blankets. We can give them food. We, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with blessing the poor. But the bottom line, until the poor, until we start thinking different, we'll always be poor. I've seen people in nice houses and cars that still thought like they had poverty. What are you going to do with all that money when you go? What are you going to do with that house all in cars when you go? Have you already figured out who's going to get that when you go? Have you done something with poor? How, how do you think? See, I feel like I am wealthy because of the friends I've got. My mentality is one of wealth because of the family of God I've got. I started over literally almost with nothing, and God has blessed me. I, I walk through my home, and I just say, God, you're so good. I start just trying to release things out of my life in the life of others. Amen. Who am I releasing to? Connections, not attachments. Attachments always want your stuff. Connections. Look for them. Be that person. Amen. Then he said, to preach the gospel to the poor, I'm going to, I'm going to tell them. They're bankrupt. Uh, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted people don't need talking to. <sighs> I see brokenhearted on social media. D, I struggle with what to respond because the words are so important. And most of the time, brokenhearted people just need a hug. They need you to sit with them. They don't need to hear you say, well, I know how you feel. Michael. I don't know how you and your brother feel. My brother's still alive, but I can tell you, I know what you feel like if it's your sister. Because I've been there already. I, you don't always know how people feel. You got cancer? I've never had cancer that I know of. Hey Amen. I don't know how you feel. You know, I feel for my wife, but I don't know how she feels. So sometimes I just keep my mouth shut, give her a hug. Hey Amen. I wait till another girlfriend gets around and let them talk. Go to the bathroom together. I don't, I don't know what to do. 
But I can tell you this, with a broken heart, Jesus touched him. The woman with the issue of blood in her body, he touched her. He said to her, she touched him, was healed. In that moment, he said, you're whole. Go in faith. Be at peace. Amen. There's somebody to touch. There's somebody giving somebody a hug, a handshake. You care for somebody when they're going through hard times. That's what that 12-year-old taught us. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives. I, I'm a man who has been fighting habits his whole life. I started my habits when I was young. Six years old, I drank my first beer. By the time I was 12, I was smoking cigarettes. By the time I was 16, I was doing marijuana. Amen. And some other things. As I move through life and those habits start breaking off of you. And I'm not condemning any of that. But I'm not condoning it either. So I'm, I'm telling you, as my language was bad. My thought life was awful. And as I begin to clean it up, and it's the washing of the Word of God that changes us, I found that, that you could have bound me. I know a man that had a, uh, that was literally a drunk. I mean, you call them alcoholics if you want. I was raised around drunks. Uh, but but the, the thing around, they, I had a friend that bound him in chains, literally bound him in chains to stop him from drinking. When he unhooked him from chains, you know what he did? Went and got a drink. Because binding people and incarcerating people don't break habits. It's the Word of God that breaks the habits. It's hearing the Word of God. It's the washing of your mind by the Word of God. Jesus came to touch and to tell. Amen. And it's hearing the Word of God that changes our habits, that, that affects us. In recovery of sight to the blind, spiritually blind. blind. When Jesus dealt with blind people, he, one guy he spit in his eye. Another guy he made a mud ball. A mud ball. He put it in his eye. And he went and washed and he went seeing. Pastor, should, should we do that to people? Only if God tells you explicitly to do that I'm serious man I mean but I just I just lay hands on them and I've been told I spit on enough people when I'm preaching if you want to get healed sit on the front row here we go but but it's he did that's what Jesus did people that are spiritually blind they can't hear their ears are fine they hear what you're saying you realize you have said the same gospel story to the same people over and over again and they ain't listening? But if you will wash their car, if you will mow their grass, if you will paint their house, if you will do something for someone, it opens their eyes. Many of you heard the story. I was in a predominantly black neighborhood. Predominantly means I was, me and my wife were the only white people there over in Z King. And I mowed my neighbor's grass. I told him about the gospel. His name was Don. He didn't want to hear it. He's six, three, six, four, big guy, work night shift. I told him about the gospel. Over. He didn't want to hear it. He knew it was, I, I was a youth pastor. I had big dogs. I had Rottweilers then. Amen. And, and so I, uh, I, I, I was out mowing my grass, push mower, long before I was wealthy. Push mower. Y'all remember push mowers? Push mower out in the front yard mowing. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, mow his grass. I said, go away, devil. <laughs> I kept mowing my grass. I heard it again. Mow his grass. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Heard it again. Mow his grass. I said, all right, God, this is on you. And I went over and I started mowing his grass. I mowed his grass all the way to his front door. He walked outside, looked at me, said, hey, what you doing? Thought it was obvious. So I'm mowing your grass. He said, why? Because God told me to? Yeah, right. This man went and got his wife and his two girls. They stood on the front porch and watched me finish mowing his grass. Don became my friend. I went to jail right after that. Some of you know that. While I was in jail, somebody broke in my house. was trying to steal my stuff. And Don prevented them from stealing all my stuff. Why did he do that? Because I became a neighbor. A new, a new lady moved in next door named Louise. Older lady. Sweet black lady. Amen. Moved over. I'm mowing my grass. I heard something say in my ear. Mow her grass. I went over to Tony, started mowing her grass. Louise walks out of the front door. She don't know me. She said, hey. Hey. You want a beer? 
I said, no, ma'am. She said, hey, help yourself. She became my friend. Eyes open when you do something for the blind. Learned that from a 12-year-old named Jesus. He came to touch and to tell. You've got to discern when the male says touch and when the male says tell. You've got to know it. A lot of times with our families, they've heard enough. They want to see something. Amen. Who needs good news? We do. We do. I'm not interested in carnal religious formulas. I'm not interested anymore. Celebrity status, Pied Pipers I've seen online and TV. I'm not interested in an escape route. Amen. To get to heaven quickly or reclusive sedation. Amen. Distractions. I'm not interested. Amen. And all that. I'm interested in hearing clear direction. I'm interested in, in providence. Amen. Seeing lashes next to me. Get excited about going to church and Jesus and her friend. That's what I want to. Amen. But when a loved one passes, they need good news. Can I get an amen? Romans 5, 6 said, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for us, for the ungodly. That was me and you. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Stop looking for bad news. Stop looking for it. Start looking for good news. You know, we are the male. You are the male. I read this scripture out of the book of 2 Corinthians 3. Amen. Go to that, please. 2 Corinthians 3. Uh, skip down one more. Let's hurry up. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. When I see you, you're a written letter. You are the mail. Amen. You're the mail that's going to be, you're a written epistle is what Paul said here. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of flesh, that is the heart. We're the mail. Some of you are the only male your family, your friends, your neighbors are ever going to see. Amen. you got to be the male. Hallelujah. Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody's been delivered for something. Share the male. Deliver the male. Amen. Whether it's touching or telling, do it. Bring good news. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every courier in this house. We speak and commission them in the name of Jesus to bring forth good news. Lord, I say to them, hide your buttons. Find out who your connections are that you've made acquaintances with. Beware of attachments. If you've ever been in an attachment, amen, turn yourself around and start connecting with people. Understand that relationship is the currency of the kingdom. Amen. And the more you have relationship, the more you have friends, amen, your brothers and sisters will be forged through your problems. I thank you, God, for the deliveries in this house, for the couriers in this building. May they share good news. Amen. May they delete the spam and the viruses from their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. If I could get uh, you to look in the front of you and get a tithing offering envelope, if you're given on their phone, amen, to show it to the servant leaders as they come by, as they prepare to take up the offering, amen, to those that are doing that. We thank you for, I want to appreciate those that do take up the offering. I want to thank those that are working in the booth, amen. As well. You know, these guys wouldn't even sound good if it wasn't for back there. We wouldn't look good on the Internet if it wasn't for those that are running the, the uh, telescope back there. Tell, tell what is it? Tell them whatever. Amen. It's a telephone, telegraph, tell a woman. It's tell us something, ain't it, Dennis? So, I forget what it's called. Telecaster. See? I was half right. Amen. On the back table is a sign up sheet, men. I need you to sign up and put your phone number there to commit to come to the Beast Feast. Beast Feast will be March the 5th. We have uh, other groups, men, uh, other men groups coming to be involved in that. Of course, we're going to be giving away 
some uh, rifle, a rifle and a BB uh, pellet gun, amen, to different ages. We got awards for those who win in horseshoes, uh, beanbag toss. We got awards for the chili, chili cook-off, first, second, third. Beautiful trophies, Joseph, amen, they created. So we got trophies for those. Uh, we just got a lot of good stuff going on for that day. Men, you need to come hang out with us. Wives, you need to kick them out. You need to make them go. You got to go. Oh, I got to go because you, cause you're over the horseshoes. Amen. We're certain, putting certain people over it. Some of you just need to come out. The weather's right. Ride your scooter. Amen. Come out and hang out. So that's all I want to mention to you to our guests. Thanks for coming. Sir, thank you for coming today. Amen. Pastor Dave, if you come on up, please sign up, guys, on your way out of the building. God love you. See you later. Amen. <laughs>